Hello everyone, this video is on the ability to see what others can't see and to process what we couldn't process before but now we have the ability to process. And so it's a celebratory video because the vibe on the planet's very high now and nothing can hide. And so things that were unseen in the subconscious or in our trauma that was passed down through generations, the generational trauma, the ability to perceive finer levels of reality, the ability to go inwards and go even deeper and through going even deeper connect to something much greater than the body. So our ability to do all of those things is much more fluid, more fluent, more easily done. And so we can celebrate that. And maybe partially due to the generations that went before us that dissolved things that we didn't um, have to dissolve in this lifetime. And so we're, we're now just doing the finishing touches. And so I know that sometimes we can look around and go, oh, there's a war, or there's childhood trauma, or there's generational um, baggage, and we're in, we can perceive that we're not where we want to be. But that's maybe a misunderstanding of the shaking that's going on, because the world's being shaken, and the residue, any remaining dirt, any remaining ignorance is coming up to be shown to us. And through looking at it and being able to see what we previously couldn't see, just the very act of seeing, and because we have a higher vibration on the planet and our awareness is very charged, just by seeing it, it can then dissolve. So the first step is noticing. I mean, let's not forget the power of noticing. And so the shaking starts to pull up things from the subconscious, things from the past, things that we didn't have the ability to see. And then we can not hide. And so this is a theme in a lot of my videos, non-hiding. There's nowhere to hide right now. There really isn't anywhere to hide. If there's any darkness within an individual, a corporation, a family unit, a past lineage, it's going to be shown and we're going to have to deal with it. And this is good. It, it can sometimes lead to the mind freaking out, going, oh my God, there's so much to process. There's so much going on. I can't do it and other people can't do it. But I'd like to move this into a place where we know that we're being taken care of and there's a reason it's being shown to us now. And we clearly have the capacity to process it. So it's a celebration that we do have the ability to do that. And we're able, through our communal living, to mirror one another and show each other parts of ourselves that we can't see on our own. And that's wonderful. That's why we do so well in relationships because any relationship, whether it's with an organization, whether it's with a husband or wife, whether it's a friend, whether it's a unit, whether it's a work situation, Everything's going to mirror us. It's going to show us things by how we react to those things we see. It's going to show us things that maybe we haven't healed within ourselves. So relationships are great. Even if it's painful, they're great because the other person is just going to point that is about to be dissolved. They'll poke at you, and then whatever residue needs to come to the surface is going to come up. And we have to 
learn how to be with anger. We have to learn how to be with resentment. We have to learn how to be with confusion or uncertainty or fear or sorrow. We, we have to learn how to be with it while simultaneously knowing that it's going to pass in its own time and knowing that the lesson is in the sorrow, the lesson is in the anger, the lesson is within every single emotion that we feel. The lesson isn't waiting for us after it's passed anymore. Everybody was looking for the lesson in the stillness. Everybody was looking for the lesson in the meditative bliss. Everybody was looking for the les lesson in some higher states of consciousness, some celestial astral traveling. But now in this new world, the lesson more so than ever is within the de-stressing. Everything is beautiful and has a lesson within it, but more so than ever, now that this stuff is coming out, it's not just a waste product. It's not just something we need to get rid of so we can get back to our happiness or our bliss. It's valuable. It's gold. And if we look into it, sometimes we can just go through it just by looking non-judgmentally at it and allowing it to be as big as it wants to be, knowing it will pass in its own time without being afraid of it. or we might get insights into why we're angry or how we're connected to that other person. And that other person that's made us angry is actually a gift that has been sent to us from our higher selves to show us what needs to be healed. And so we are each other's gurus, we are each other's teachers, we are each other's helpers. In a unity perspective, there's no difference between oneself and the other. It's a thread of difference, but it's really not that consequential. And so if that other person is you, that other person's been hired by you to show you, to show you what needs to be dissolved. And so if you don't like your boss, you don't like where you work, if you're upset with your husband or wife, if your friends irritated you, great. Look at that. And you will learn so much about yourselves. Yes, we can go for a massage. We can go to a meditation class. You know, we, some of us might decide to just check out because we don't want to deal with the emotion and, and smoke some weed or go and meet somebody and have a one night stand or, you know, down a bottle of gin or whatever our favorite method is to not want to receive the gift because that's what it is. It's a gift. The gift isn't the alcohol. The gift isn't the hot woman that we want to go to bed with. The gift isn't our escape route. The gift is the pain. The gift is the suffering. And that can be transmuted and is being transmuted at all times by either yourself or someone else. Because if you're not willing to do the work to see the pain, that pain will just get transferred onto somebody else. That's how generational trauma gets passed down, down, down. Nobody's doing the work. They're just, they're given a gift and they go, I don't want to open this gift because this gift's anger. Let me give this anger gift to my daughter. Oh, I don't want to open that anger gift and resentment gift. Let me give that anger and resentment to my son. There we go. He doesn't want to open the anger or resentment gift. So he gives it to his friend and it's, it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. But the vibe is now so high 
that we have the capacity to open the gifts. So it's a celebration that we're no longer afraid of things that previously we didn't want to see or that were hidden or we just didn't have the capacity to cope with. We're really lucky these days because there's amazing therapists and healers and um, ways of, of, of dissolving stress. We know more science is helping us too as, as, as well. We can study the brain. We can know why we suffer and what might help. And alongside that, we have the meditation and the mindfulness. And for some people, really advanced meditations. So it's great news. And while a plane flies above the sky, I will just channel a little more about feeling what others don't want to feel. Well, it's to do with timing. There's a time for everything. And there's sometimes a time where we don't want to feel. And we'll push it down. So, for example, we're shopping. We're about to buy some yogurt. Choosing, should I have strawberry, rhubarb, or, you know, plain? And then a memory pops into our head about our friend that's no longer speaking to us after 10 years, even though we really loved them, and a sadness arises. And then maybe a tear wants to fall, but we are embarrassed because we're in a supermarket and we don't want people looking, so we just shove it down and we go, okay, I'll just have strawberry. No, I don't want strawberry yogurt. I want to go and get some ice cream. I'll make sure it's double chocolate chip with caramel and just get that. And then we go home and we just eat, 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 eat. And then the sadness, you know, doesn't go away. And so we eat, 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 eat more. And then we think, well, that's not working. I'm just going to call up somebody. I'm going to talk to them. Maybe they can make me laugh or I'll go on my dating app because I don't want to feel sad. Because we perceive that the timing's not working for us. So where does that sadness go? Well, it gets pushed down and it gets some of it gets stored within us, but some of it some of it goes into the collective. And somebody else that maybe doesn't have the ice cream, doesn't have the app. And maybe there's no f food substitute and f has the courage will start to cry and won't feel ashamed that they're crying, won't feel annoyed that they have emotions and they might start to feel angry and upset and think it's theirs, but it's not. And they cry for you. People cry for you all the time. When you push down emotions, they don't just disappear. They go elsewhere. They go within your cell cells. They go within your subconscious. They go to someone else. They go infect your mind and personality in ways that are unfathomable. They infect your body. They can lead to illnesses. They can infect your marriage. They can affect your children. They can infect the people that you work with in the office if you're in an office. They, they are always going to, there are always going to be consequences to repression. And so people feel things for us. And so let's thank the people that are feeling things for us. Not everybody has the capacity to meditate. They don't have the time, maybe. They don't have the tools. They don't have the therapeutic resources. They don't have the 
the healthy food, the healthy air, the healthy lifestyle to be able to manage the stress. They might have no other option but to push it down and to get in their car and go to work and to feed the kids and, and make sure that things just carry on. There's a hierarchy of, of survival needs. And to break down and cry is, is a luxury sometimes. And that's why we have war veterans with PTSD. They don't have the luxury in, in a war zone to break down and cry. They have to repress it. They have to compartmentalize it, get shared in the collective, and some of it will follow them home. When we're in a therapeutic relationship, the therapist or the healer can feel what the client is unwilling to heal, heal and feel. So any therapists out there, make sure that you have the tools to, to dissolve that. And things change. Disappointment doesn't always look like disappointment. Disappointment can be transfer, transformed into a personality disorder. Um, so for instance, you could be a disappointed child, disappointed that there's so much pressure on you to perform in a capitalist society that you have to put on an act and disassociate for yourself and you might develop narcissism is a byproduct of that environment. And then when you interact with other people, you will attract people and interact with people who you can take advantage of and who you can manipulate and who can give you a supply of attention. But also the person that you're interacting with has a wound and will allow that interaction to take place because they're not willing to feel that people pleasing has a source. People pleasing, rescuing, not setting boundaries, allowing narcissists into their life and narcissistic behavior has a source as well. And I've done other videos on that. And so if you have a narcissist, I'm just, it's not like we're just one dimensional, but just for this example, I'll just, let's make us one dimensional. <laughs> you have a narcissist and you have a people pleaser or somebody that's dissociative and, and, and likes to see the best in, in everybody, even though there's positive and negative in personalities. Those two people attract one another for a reason, to show each other each wound. And when the vibe's high, we start to be able to see the dynamic. The people pleaser starts to see, oh, I want to change this person, but that's not going to work. I need to change myself. The narcissist may, because the vibe's high, realize that the grandiosity is just hiding childhood wounds. And so that interaction is inevitable and there are many co-creations and people are feeling parts of one another which the other can't feel. They're both feeling like disappointment, but it's expressing in a different way. It's expressing in a different kind of disorder and there's no one disorder is better than the other. We're all disordered. We're all wounded on one level, on a personality level, on another level, we're transcendental divine beings that are untouched by all of this anyway. But we can thank whoever we interact with for showing us who we are at a deeper level. And 
giving us the opportunity to heal. So I'm going to just do a prayer. And the prayer is that we all realize how united we are and how we're a gift to one another and how we mirror one another and show each other parts of our selves that might need to surface and dissolve. Nobody's better than anyone else and make me may we all realize that nobody's better than anyone else and that we're all gifts to one another. And may we pray and thank everybody who has the capacity and the tools to dissolve stress that we can't dissolve for ourselves. Sometimes those are humans, sometimes they're not humans, sometimes their intelligence is from beyond. We invite those intelligences from beyond to dissolve things that we can't dissolve for ourselves as a human race. And for any human that is in therapy or is meditating or is looking inward, we thank you for the work you do and hope that nature supports you to continue. Jigam.